right, y'all, we're gonna get started on this one. There's a little bit of noise back here. But we are down here at my cousin Chris's shop, Cars R Us Auto Body. If you've been watching for a while, you've seen us down here a few times doing some things. And today, we are gonna get this topper started. So we've gotta pull this off, uh, set it all up on here, and we'll get to it. This time, we don't have to lay on the ground, right? Yeah, it'll be nice. <laughs> we don't have to put safety glasses on to keep rust out of our eyes. Yeah, that'll be great. <laughs> All right, uh, so it's four clamps to get this thing off and we're gonna slide it back and set her back on here. So we're just gonna get into this, guys. Stay tuned, y'all. Hey guys, you wanna grab the sides over there? So what we'll do here is tape this right as tight as we can between the black and the gray. Okay. And, and what I'm doing is turning the tape in here. And it might even be easier with three-quarter tape first, and then we can put some uh, uh, two-inch on it as well. But because uh, the thinner the tape is, the more mat, more you can do it down into that edge. Yeah. So you just. You say I twist it like this and it leads it into that edge. Okay. Okay, so the magic is to have it right on the seam between the black and the gray. Okay. Good shit. And that's where uh, so that's where where we'll be able to sand the gray really well yeah, next right, to the black. Edge, okay. Right? And then when we when we mask it for painting, we'll do it just a little bit differently. So that's what we'll do all the way around this. And if we need more room for that, we can do this to protect it. Okay. Right. But in this tight, in this tight area, we'll be using a, a red scuff pad for adhesion. You scuff that. Okay. Up until this area, then we can use a sander on the flats. All okay. right. So just tape that around there tight. Uh, you can use a fingernail, or we can give you a tool to push it in there too. Um, but that's so that we can really jam a scuff pad in there and get a mechanical scratch on the gray without scratching the black. We have some scuff pins too. Do we have a scuff pin? get more okay but those are fiber fiberglass strands like and then you just screw it out like that and you can do this to get right into that right edge. into it yep you see how it's right next to it mm -hmm. you can do that and then do the red scuff pad as well okay combination of the two perfect and if that fiberglass stuff wears out we got refills all right Pulled the truck out because they're going to do a little bit of spraying out there. Uh, but we've hit all the edges and around the windows with some scuff pads. Uh, so we've kind of let, I think you guys can see, as you can see in the reflection there, maybe how it's scuffed along this edge. You got to get in there and do that. So we've done that around all the windows and then we're on to the next step. Going to get the dual action sander. So that's what they call a DA. Where it spins but it also orbits so we're going to use 320 grit sandpaper and we're going to do it dry 
And that gives us a mechanical adhesion for the sealer and paint to stick. And we're going to use sealer to get our color shift. We're going to put white sealer on first and then white paint. That way it covers quicker. But sealer also fills a 320 grit scratch relatively easily. It has a little body to it. Um, we could sand like with 600, a little smoother sandpaper. It would take longer to do, but we wouldn't have to seal it then. But then you'd use more paint to get the same coverage. So, you know, the cost, you're not really saving anything. Mm. So in this case where we're doing the entire panel and it's going to go solid white, we're just going to knock it out with 320, seal it and paint it. If we were doing a customer's car for a collision where we're replacing a door and then having to blend for fenders, that's where you take into account the smoother sanding and doing different techniques to, you know, feather in the color and all that. So this is pretty much a scuff and puff. I'm excited to get this thing color matched. <laughs> I think you guys already know that. y'all it is day two of the process and I guess I'll let you tell them what we're gonna do all right well first thing we're gonna do is go through the uh, topper here and flat sand the places where we had touched up a couple of rock chips and so they're smooth and then we'll scrutinize it and take a look for places that are shiny and uh, make sure that we've got all our areas scuffed we'll wipe it down we'll unmask the areas that we had taped off for prepping close to the windows and remask that for painting and then we'll uh we'll get after it put some All liquid right. on i'm excited uh we'll have to let it dry overnight tonight and then probably come back and put it on tomorrow or whatever but it'll at least be white by the end of the day so yeah all right we're just going to get after this pretty good Mike. within a quarter of an inch okay. of the edge. This is pretty quick and easy. Just go within a quarter of an inch of that. And then, and then what we'll be doing is uh, put pull-off tape on. So after we put that on, we'll put the paper on to cover the window. And then right before we paint, we'll put this quarter inch pull-off tape on. Oh, is that for like cut, pull the edge out? Yeah, so this is what we call a, a so we, We'll put this on and make it the exact, like that. And then after we paint, we pull this, then the paint will settle down and have a nice, it'll fit nice okay. and not have a hard edge. And then uh, you don't run the risk. So if you uh, paint that and let it dry and then unmask it, then you run the risk of that um, tape peeling paint. Okay. Not any different than a house paint, you know. You can peel while it's still kind of soft. So here we are. Uh, you can see we went, he, he went ahead and got the floor all wet to keep the dust down. And the green tape that you saw him putting on there was the pull off tape to get a nice clean line. But I think we need to wipe it down maybe one more time and we're about ready to start spraying. I'm going to use a new, brand new tack rag. We'll use a brand new cup for the paint gun. 
white is not where you want to get a dirt speck in something either, you know? Oh, yeah. Sometimes we paint white like that MR2 is a solid color, solid white, not base coat, clear coat. That was another option, but this will work just fine. So. Speaking of the MR2, I guess I didn't show that to you guys. It's under wraps right now, but I'll give you a sneak peek, I guess. Okay. So he's, uh, he's been working on this for a while for a customer. And uh, I'm not going to pull the cover off of this, but it's a first gen MR2, Toyota MR2. Hand painted. Uh, that's all paint. That's not actually, that's not. Uh, vinyl or anything like that. It's looking good. The roof is red that matches that and that paint color is taken from the red color in the actual emblems. Anyways, it's gorgeous. For you guys that don't know, the engine's in the back on this thing. And I think, I think at one point in time, this may have been one of the fastest cars on the road, but I think it's like an 80s model. And then he's got another rad project back here. He's working on for somebody. Cuda. And they're putting some beef on it. I think that's a Viper tire. And look at that. Look at that. Yeah. So obviously lots of work left to do on this one, but it's gonna be rad when they get it done. The, yeah, sweet MR2. So these are disposable cups that have the graduations built right in for different mixing ratios. Uh, they look backwards on the outside so you're looking on the inside of the cup as you're filling it from the inside. So we'll be uh, mixing a 4 to 1 ratio here so we'll be looking it to the inside here. That's one way to do it. Another way is that there's the graduations that are just measurements and that's that's typically how I've mixed paint over the years, so I'll just go, you know, to 400, whatever, and then an extra 100, or do the math in my head. But um, the easy way for, you know, recent graduates is to, to do the 4, four to 1 ratio. If we're doing a 2 to 1 ratio, you pour it, like you hear, we'll pour it to the number 4 here, and then you pour it to the next number, next plateau, and that's your 1 value. So this is sealer, it goes on in between your paint surfaces, so it helps with adhesion. And so we're going to mix a full quart here, or a liter, and then uh, we may get, we may almost get two, two, uh, two coats out of it. So we're going to mix our four to one and we'll go clear up to the five, or the six I guess it is. And And then we put the activator on. Up to the one. There's our full, full quart. Now, typically, a lot of times I'll mix into a paint can and then strain it into the gun. This is essentially the capacity for the paint gun. So um, there's no str straining involved there, but there's a fine screen in the yeah. cap that keeps any particulates out it's a it's a it's a very fine screen but it's not so fine that it would keep metallic from getting through it if you were painting a metallic color mm. so so this is the the mixing thing and we put the it has a lock interlocking deal here where we do this and turn it in place and then then you have to remember to ventilate it. So like a gas can. You don't you know, get a suction in there. Like these new gas cans that don't pour very well, if you don't pop this loose like that, you don't let air into the cap and it won't flow out the bottom. Mm -hmm. so, so that's that.
Remember, this isn't paint, this is sealer. We're still gonna paint it. Put a lighter coat on that. You don't want to get it too wet where we had a couple of cut throughs. It could soak into that paint and make it wrinkle. And you don't want to get runs. I had higher air pressure on the sides for a little more atomization. But on the top, I turned it down a little bit because you know, it will lay flat on the roof without atomization as much. You're just generating a bunch of overspray that's dry on the edges. So I believe I have enough here to hit a second coat. We're going to let this flash off for a little bit. Coat number two of sealer. Although I don't know how much you guys need to see of this, but. So with two coats of sealer, we've got the color shift we're looking for to um, pretty much eliminate the silver that was underneath. And that'll give us a good base, white on white, to put our color on. We'll let this flash off for a few minutes and we'll crack it off and put some white paint on. We have a brand new mixing cup that we use to start this project. We should be able to just keep it clean throughout and, and continue using it. Um, Sometimes you can see I have a saved one up there that I can use for, you know, multiple vehicles at times. I mean, these are disposable, but they're not like one-time throw it away. Kind yeah, of things, you know? they aren't free. No. So uh, I will uh, get the life out of them. I can. What makes sense, you know? You know, then use it for a paint job, and then use it for a primer job. You know, there's time and place for everything. If you don't remember to put your cap back on, the you ventilation cap, then you come over here, you pour something in it, it starts leaking on uh, your countertop. How many times have you done that? Uh, more than I want to admit, I think. <laughs> and it's almost always when you're just in a hurry or you're like no-brainer just kind of going, you know, going it's, through it's the a motions. routine deal for you, you know, and you, you forget. Or you went from color to clear or something like that mm -hmm. didn't pay attention so again we have Ford YZ YZ is a very popular color for Ford white on trucks and I remember when we painted your your Chevy some white I think it was 8624 was a color on it and we had a couple of people comment about man you could use cheaper paint on that you know but on your new truck my concern isn't the quality of the paint for longevity or durability, but for accountability for color match. So, you know, some of those grade B paints, if I were painting a refrigerator, it didn't matter, I would definitely be using a grade B paint, you know, save a buck, right? Okay. But um, we're using the Premier paint just because um, we get a best color match. We turned it in with the VIN number and the paint code, and they mixed us this paint for us. Perfect. I guess I didn't realize there was different grades like that. Yeah, so, because um, Joe, my painter, I, I said, hey, let's get some paint ordered. And he brought me this can of paint. We had code YZ in white. Uh, and he's like, do you want to use this? And I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. I want it to match better than that. But he had shown me a can. It was a the, the, the Nason grade B base coat. And I'm like, nah, I think we want it to match better than that. You know, my cousin Mike, you got to live with the guy. <laughs> it's going to be on video. Yeah, right. Some of these paints, so solid colors are what they call, the, the, they're opaque. The strength is, is good covering. But you get some of these really vibrant colors, like the reds and the blues. They might even be a tri-coat paint where they put a base color down and then a mid-cone. But 
they're very transparent and that's how you get the depth. If you can't see through it because it's transparent you don't get the depth and sometimes they even have you they'll say to under reduce it so here we're going to reduce it one to one um, but uh, there's some of them that you've got to reduce like 50% just to get coverage. I mean, you're like six or seven coats before you got coverage. No kidding. Yeah, it's terrible. And the stuff's like, you know, a pint of paint can cost me $200, mm -hmm. just the color itself. So, so here we're going to go, you know, half, two to one. So, you know, we're going to do this about here. When we had the, with this, that's the whole trick with the mixing stick that we did last time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, half and half, but this is a graduated deal and it gives us the that already. So, um, your reducer. So, reducers, what they do is they give you the ability to spray the paint. Otherwise the paint's too thick to come out of the gun. But the reducer is then what evaporates once it's applied to the car. So when you hear the government talk about VOCs, that's a volatile organic compound. So that's the thinner. That's what evaporates from the car. And when they talked about lowering VOCs for the environment and for, um, <clears throat> for you know, quality of air and stuff, so the clear coats we use, we used to used to use more um, reducers. And back in the old lacquer days, it would be like one part of paint, two parts of reducer instead of one to one. So um, the VOCs, the lower VOCs are having less of the reducers. And when you're using clear coats and you're spraying with less reducers, that's when you get a little heavier orange peel, or you have to apply it with a greater air pressure. Um, I mean. There was a day where cars coming off the assembly line, the orange peel was so bad they were getting repainted at the dealerships before the owners would accept them. No kidding. That, yeah, I mean the, the shit came out like syrup because they were the government had leaned on the car makers for lower VOCs, but you know then they're getting repainted at the dealership. But so you're just doubling the VOCs. Yeah, you, you, the there. yeah. So there's a it's, you know for every tenth car that has to be repainted, right? Yeah. <laughs> but. Um, but now they're actually coming out with waterborne paints. I'm not certain. I mean, those are on east on, on the west coast. It's real heavy. There's a there's a handful of people using waterborne paints. Um, but then you have water as your reducer, like a distilled water or something. I don't know exactly what they're using. But then you have to have blowers and dryers and stuff for that. Yeah, and then humidity, the humidity. If it's a high humidity, like in the summer, that that blushes your paint worse. And then I think that that's still just the undercoats. I think the top coats are still urethane grade. Huh. Like the clear coats are still urethane based. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that uh, I'm done painting cars by the time I'm forced to use water base. Mm -hmm. All right, he's slapping on the first coat of paint now. Yeah, that sealer goes on nice and smooth, and if we can get rolling with that, we'll have a nice and done job. it while you're putting color on so you know exactly how you want to do it when you're clearing. But I brought this up to the edge 
I did the back all the way. When I sprayed the back, I sprayed this up over the edge. So then when I'm doing the top, my stroke can end here, but it's already painted here, so that it kind of blends in. Looking great. All right, he's slapping on coat number two. It's looking amazing so far. All right, we're going on the last coat of paint. It's gonna be a little bit lighter coat. I think you, did you say you reduced it a little more? I reduced it a little bit, not too much. And I'm gonna spray a little bit on the front there. Mostly just because, well, I want, I want to spray a little bit of it to say I did something. But because up here, nobody's ever going to see it. So when I screw it up and get runs in it, nobody will ever know. But it's looking amazing. About how far away? Probably about six inches. Uh, start on the so bottom. I would, I would st start on the bottom and then go back and forth like this up this side, and then back and forth like this, and then across there, and then, then I want you to paint it up to this crown. I just don't want to screw this up. At least I can say I did something. As far as the paint goes. I'm on the wrong side of the draft. Here we go. part clear then? Correct. And the clear so that the uh, sealer was four to one. Four, uh, four parts of sealer to one part activator. And that was just product and catalyzation. The color was one to one. One part of paint and one part of reducer. Remember the reducer is what evaporates. Mm -hmm. And now clear coat will be, the clear coat we'll be using is a one part to one part. So one part clear, one part activator, and then we'll reduce it maybe 20%, 15% for flow. And then that little bit evaporates. Mm. So, um, but yeah, it's a one to one on the clear. All right, you guys heard it. We're gonna go grab some lunch, zooming in, and uh, wait for that stuff to dry before we start clearing everything. Go we'll get some food and see you guys back here. 
All right, y'all, we're back from lunch. We went and had Dinkers. You guys have never heard of Dinkers in the Omaha area. It's a kind of a legendary spot worth checking out. And I didn't screw it up, paint in the front. Looks good. It's all good. Tack cloth to get any dust or anything that's settled on off of there. We're about ready for clear. So are there different clears that you use for different paints, like specifically, or? Well, um, even clear coats have, I don't know if you want to call it a different grade. So the idea would be to follow one brand of paint all the way through. Sealer color, clear coat. Okay. Um, I typically use, this is a Southern Poly, Southern Poly Incorporated. I use their clear coat. Um, it's an actually a one-to-one -one clear, and the, the um, I don't know, they have, then you have different speeds for dry, you know, mm. and a lot of times it's just the, the dry to the touch or the dry to uh, um, cure. It takes a little time for everything to cure, but um, we'll see if this makes it more. But there are different levels. I mean, they're, like this Southern Poly might cost us what they call a kit would be a gallon of clear, a gallon of activator. So you got two gallons of sprayable material. That's probably, I don't know the price exactly, but it, that might be a $200 kit. Mm. You know, you have other clears that are a gallon of clear and a quart of activator, four to one reduction, that might be a $150 kit. There are clears sold by DuPont and all these other places, could be $700 for that same kit. Oh, wow. And to me, personally, between myself and the customers that are buying my services, we're not finding the benefit in the six times as much cost because mm -hmm. the resins and the performance of the, what you would consider a grade B clear coat are, are, are good enough, quality enough, you know, for a routine repair. Um, you know, as long as somebody's going to own a car, you know, I've, I've even put this on show cars, you know, mm -hmm. but again, a show car is not exposed to ultraviolet light on a daily basis for 10 or 15 yeah, years. Yeah, like so. a how many gallons, like let's say you were going to repaint my truck, how many gallons of, of paint and or would you need to do an entire vehicle like that? So, um, it would take, and being again, that whole conversation about opaqueness of a color and white and stuff. So white, yeah. you'd probably take a gallon, uh, probably take a gallon to do your truck, the exterior um, of color. And I'd probably take a gallon of clear too. Mm. Uh, when I repainted my old motorhome, we put 22 gallons of sprayable material on it. Jeez. Between sealer, a base color, top color, and clear coats. And one of the things that people don't think about, like when you're doing stuff like that, 20 gallons of material does have a, well, a weight to it. Like you're adding weight to the vehicle. True. I mean, they, in the in the like an airplane has. You know, an airplane, an airplane that's unpainted, like an aluminum airplane, it adds like 700 or 800 pounds to an airplane. Yeah, just to spray a coat of paint on it. Yep, to color it out. Time for some, time for some clear, y'all. Crazy what one coat of clear will do. 
Yeah, that's the transition between dull and shiny. <clears throat> well, actually, a lot of times in the industry, they'll only put two coats on. That saves money. It's good enough for the routine car. We'll go ahead and put a third coat on. I think what I may do is change my process on the last coat and spray the top first and then spray the sides last. And the reason I would do that is it flips the script when it comes to if you spray the sides first and then the top, you have a, a good flow in the process, but you run a risk of the overspray from the top landing on the sides and doling the clear. So I'm going to spray the top first and then have the sides be as glossy as possible. Clear coat number two. Alright, you guys can probably kind of see where we're at here, how shiny it's looking. He's about to lay the last coat of clear on it. Kind of looks great. Looks great. <laughs> My battery's about to run out. Yeah, I'm very satisfied with that. Probably get ourselves some different badges for there, but we'll figure something out. gets that molding kind of relax and kind of meld in and it would be hard to tell that we didn't take the windows out you know yeah guys i think taking the windows out of this would dry be... any paint that got up against the paint and cured as you're unmasking it it could peel away mm -hmm. that would be bad i've had that happen before too they don't like it Well, is that it for today then? That is it for today. That is it for today. All right. <laughs> I don't want to watch this dry. Well, it's going to dry overnight, and then we'll be back tomorrow morning.
and we'll get this all yeah i'm really happy with it slapped back on the truck and get the rest of this stuff pulled off and whatnot oh that looks good I love it. looks good all right well i guess i'll see you guys tomorrow all right y'all welcome back it is day number three of the project and we should be slapping it on today so pretty stoked and the door's locked he might, i don't know if he's here yet uh, i'm actually on time but uh i really like the way the truck looks without the topper on there but we gotta have the topper but man it's that is a good looking rig y'all still super happy with how it turned out as far as the leveling kit and tire selection goes but we'll have our all color match today yeah it was perfect really digging it all right i gotta wait for chris well here it goes y'all it's looking pretty good we're gonna go ahead and get the tape pulled off you said it's not quite cured yet well it's well it's probably with the overnight cure with the activator we used we we used a medium activator even though um, it's winter time per se um, a fast activator just it has a risk of a little bit more dieback and then a little bit more <laughs> like brittleness of the paint for rock chips and stuff so this is this is just fine um, but it's about 80, it's about 60 percent cured in this overnight and it takes this paint unless you have a full makeup with a you know million and a half BTU furnace mm -hmm. like some shops do um, you don't get that greater cure until just time okay. it just takes time so if, if we have a smaller panel like a door that we need to cure we have these shortwave lights that we can put on it and, and we can put them on here and dance them around for an entire day and get a little more cure but it's good enough to you know it, it's good enough to go into the elements and it'll be just fine uh, but yeah we'll get this unmasked and uh, get it put on the truck yeah guys i'm just taking it home today it'll probably sit in the driveway for two days while i try to get this video edited out so and just like that those windows will perfect oh yeah look at that guys Looks amazing. Got it in there? Oh yeah, perfectly into the jams. Yep. It, it's good to go. Yeah. It looks great, guys. Really excited, like I said, probably a couple of times. We'll figure out something that we can do to fill in this little area where the badge was at. I've got some friends with like laser engravers. Maybe we can get a little piece of a, I don't know, some aluminum. 
some thin aluminum and have it engraved with something and glue it on right there. You're gonna have to come up with a CQ. Yeah, some sort of little logo <laughs> would get, be really good right there. The CQ emblem. <laughs> All right, yeah, we've got to move some stuff, get the truck in here, and then Chris has got a couple of his guys that are kind of come in quick and help us toss this on there. Hi, the Bentley Bear. Good morning. Great. We hope. Watch your fingers. Like I said, I can get in there. Yep. You get in there, get it so centered. Watch that. Watch that. Good morning, LaVelli. Good morning. <laughs> Turtle in it is a great. It, it works so, <laughs> it's so, so much well. of that. Yeah. Uh, do we go. What a, how, you want to roll like perfectly flush up the front? Uh, if it goes forward, just move it. Won't because the carpet right here, this lip goes over. Oh, the it, it, there's a stop. Okay. Uh, so as long as we get it like good. Well, while we're in here, we were looking at it, of course, and I was going to take these off, so I think we're just going to go ahead and pull these off. They're just decals. Uh, they're just stickers, basically. So we'll peel these off, and then they've got an eraser wheel that we can get her off of there. I don't know about that, but yeah, we'll take this off. I mean, it's neat, it's four by four, but uh, we don't need that on there. Just like that, my truck is two-wheel drive. Just like that. It's all about having the right tool. Like Shazam. Looks way better. <laughs> way better. <coughs> yeah, that just, just rip off. On. Yep, we just get a plastic spray for that. Thanks to Woodhouse and the homie Kenny for selling me the truck, but that's ugly, so we're taking that off too. Jeez, you over here professional. <laughs> yeah, that looks good, man. You done advertising for Woodhouse? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wow! You did it faster than I did. <laughs> Look at that. Probably helps that they were pretty new. Right. Not baked on too There's hard. A, that's the student teaching the master, Dan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he guns work. He guns work too. Yeah, but I've a lot always. Of times the, the, the sticky residue is left behind, so that's why I typically use this. But that, that's good. It's done. Peeled right off. Yep, yeah. no problem. Yeah, it looks good. I gotta have to. I'm gonna get this thing in and get it fully detailed by my guy. It hasn't been waxed or anything since I got it, so I gotta yeah. go through all that nonsense. Good to go. Good. Perfect. I think we're about ready to pull her out in the light. Truck is dirty, but that's whatever. Looks great. Looks 
looks so much better than the silver. I mean, the truck is pretty dirty compared to the topper. Uh, so we definitely need to give that a wash, but we're going to give it a day or two, uh, clean the wheels up and all that. Looks good without the 4x4 badging on there for sure. I like the clean look. Same with the back here. We got the old Woodhouse logo off. <sighs> Perfect. Looks great. Figure out a badge for right there. Just because it has that little indention, I feel like it needs something there. It looks great. And uh, I think we're just gonna kind of close it out there. You got anything you'd like to tell them? Oh my gosh, that looks so much better, don't it? It looks great. It's like a, what, drapes and carpet deal? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, the core truck and uh, you got your black accessories with your rims and stuff. And then, you know, whatever you may do in the future with a luggage carry-all yep. or something like you did on the other one, that's going to look really sharp. Yeah. That, I'm glad we used that uh, Premier Paint for a good color match. And it worked out perfect the way we masked those windows. We didn't have to take them out. And stuff, oh, yeah. You know? It looks great. And that yeah. saved us so much trouble of, you know, I don't you can pull the windows if you really want to. But, that, you know, yeah. Yep, leave that alone. But that's kind of the practice in, in the trade for being able to mask or paint tight to something without the paint peeling in the future mm -hmm. but we we did that with the prep pen and made sure it was all well sanded so we should be good so uh you know once again guys if you're in the omaha area if you need any body work anything like this done or if you need rust control done you guys got to come on down and check them out uh you can find them on facebook still correct and all of yep, those yep cars are us autobody.com and crown of omaha.com and I will leave those links down in the description. So I think awesome. we'll just close it out here. And uh, as always, stay tuned for the next adventure. I'll see you in a bit.